Hallelujah. Well, this is one Sunday. You don't have to listen to me talk much. <laughs> you know what? I, what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to get started on a, uh, uh, another sermon. It, it might you know, be a couple, maybe two or three messages that will be in this. But I just want to follow up on last week's message. If you didn't watch it, it's about leveling up and unsubscribing from some things of this world. But I have another word that, that I want to bring to you today. So this morning with the, the time remaining that we have here, I'm just going to take about you know, 15 minutes or so and just give you something. And the word that I have for you really, it comes out of some conversations that I've been having this week, prayer, and even you know, out of my devotions. And the word is distinction distinction. And so I know it's going to be in a couple of parts. I'm going to have to find a place to, to end this here today without going over because I, there's a song that I want to sing. I asked Amy, uh, Amy to sing at the end of the service. I just want us to engage in, in that as well today. But there are two, two types or two aspects of distinction that I want to talk about. And then another thing too, I want you to be here next week. It's a family service, so your kids will be in here. I want you all to be here. We want to celebrate having our kids in service with us. It's incredibly important, but I'm really super excited about the, the illustration that I have for the kids next week, but I really think you're going to like it too. So I want you to be here, participate in that, bring your kids. But there's, there's a couple of distinctions. The first thing that I want to say is it's actually no distinction with regard to those who are being saved in Christ Jesus. There's no distinction. The Bible said there, there's no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. That in the cross, in Jesus, in salvation, we are one. And you can read about this. It's, it's said over and over and over again in the book of Acts, in Galatians, in Colossians, Corinthians, Romans. And I'll give you an example. Out of the, the book of Galatians, Paul is writing to the church there in chapter 3, verse 28. He says that there is neither Jew nor Gentile, there is neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So in this way, there's no distinction. And it was also prophesied that the Gentiles, the nations, would experience salvation as well as the Jewish people. Okay? The Jewish people experienced the salvation of Jesus and then the Gentiles did. And they had to work that out. But the Holy Spirit was being poured out on and filling not only the Jewish believers, but now also the Gentile believers who put their trust in Jesus. This is something that you get. And we forget that sometimes the church was Jewish first and then Gentile. And so we, we're a part of that. And I can talk more about that as well. But the part that I want to focus on is the, the thing that there is a distinction with regard to those who are in Christ Jesus, whether Jew or Gentile. So what you believe in, there is a distinction here. And I want to talk about that. And some of these things uh, are going to kind of poke and prod a little bit, but I think that's good for us. But there are those who have come out of the world and into the faith in understanding that that brings a distinction with it. And there are distinctions all over the Bible, and I'm just going to give you a few examples here really quickly. But in, the, in Egypt, God made a distinction between who? Between the Egyptian and the Israelite. He made a clear distinction between the two, even between the lands of the, the Israelite and the Egyptian. We've been learning on Thursday nights. John's been teaching a, a great Bible study there. The distinction, I'm not going to go into this, but between the leavened and the unleavened. There's something there for us to know what that distinction is about, but it, there is a distinction. Israel was to come out of Egypt in many ways and then into a distinct relationship with God. God gave the Israelites instructions. He gave them commands and laws and words to live by. And if you're reading in your one-year Bible, we not that long ago just went through all of those. We saw a lot of those distinctions that God was making in there. The way that they would eat, not like the nations around them. He made a distinction. 
The way that they would dress, not like the nations around them. Again, he made a distinction. The way that they would treat others, not like the nations around them. He made a distinction. But not only were the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, but God was working to get the Egypt out of them as well. There are distinctions, and this is, this is where we get affected by this deeply. But there are distinctions between the holy and the profane. And sometimes we find out that we've been living a little less in the holy and a little more in the profane, and we need to be called out of that. But we need to know what the profane is. And we don't learn what the profane is to the world around us because the world is not going to give us the right definition. We need to know what is profane to God. And that is what has to matter to us. Amen? There's a distinction between the clean and the unclean. God said in a number of places throughout the Scripture, Be holy, be holy, because I am holy. Well, what does it mean to be holy? It means to be separate. It means to be different. It means to be set apart. It means to be identifiable. It means to be distinct. And so as a holy people in the Lord, God is calling you to be distinct. It's not a really pretty word, but it's a word that we need to be familiar with. But I'll just say this, that as I'm looking into this and reading and studying this, the greatest distinction, especially that the, the Israelites coming out of Egypt would make, is that they would call upon the name of and worship the one true God. The greatest distinction. In fact, that's the greatest distinction that we would make in our lives too. As we come out of the world and into relationship with God, we let go of all of the other things and we come into relationship, the distinction of relationship with a one true living and holy God. Amen? There's a distinction between the believer and the unbeliever that will be seen in the last days. And I believe that we are living in those days or a portion of that timeline, somewhere on that timeline, I don't know that there's anybody alive that can really tell us this is where we are in the timeline, but we all need to be aware that there will be a distinction and is a distinction between believer and unbeliever, those who are saved and those who are perishing. And I think those are startling words, but those are words that we need to hear as believers in Jesus. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 16 and 17, it says, What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. Come out from among them and be separate, be distinct. And so there are, there are some things that we just need to think about. We need to take in. We don't live in ancient times. We live in modern times. But we can't look at the ancient times as being some fairy tale, some mythology, you know, something that's just long ago. It's out of touch. It's not. God never changes. God never changes. His holiness will never, ever change. God is holy today like He was holy then. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3 says, I, Lord, do not change. God doesn't change. You remember me, I tell you the story once in a while that there was a time when I was very young, uh, I was very, I can say that now, I was in my, my early 20s. Some of you, that's not that young. To me, that's really young. But there was a day where I, I said, you know, God, you must change. You must change because look at the world around. Look at how the world is today, you know, compared to the ancient times, to the Bible. And sometime after that, as I was reading the Bible, and I come across the verse that says, I, the Lord, do not change, and I get the total chills from the top of my head to my toes going, I was wrong. 
God does not change. So I want to go through some, uh, some passages here and just in the next five minutes get through as much as I can without seeming rushed. But, but I do want to, to share these things with you and get a start on this. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, and there are a couple of passages like this that I want to share with you, and I want to just bring up some words. But it says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. I want you to look at the characteristics here. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. I bring these characteristics to you because these characteristics are distinctives, some distinctives of a life in Jesus Christ. And if you are a follower of Jesus, if you are a carrier of the cross, we have to be distinct. We have to be. We're in the world not of the world. We live in this world. We minister to those who are in the world, but we do not have to act like the world and give in to its ways. So what distinctions, what distinctions can we have here in this place right now, walking out of this place today? And here are a few just to get started. And I I want you to stay with this message. If you're not able to make it next week, I want you to watch it because I think this is important. And also, for those of you who you've been believers for a long time, I don't want to make this overly elementary, but there are so many among us today here and who will watch this someday, uh, sometime, that need to hear and understand these things. And for some of us, it's just a good reminder. The fruit of this has great implications, and that's the reason why I feel compelled to share it. But Jesus asked, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Oh my gosh, what a question. When the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on the earth? Will there be any distinction between the world and the faithful? And sometimes I have to ask myself, Lord, if You come in my lifetime, will You find faith in me? Will there be a distinction between me and the world? And I hope that that is a yes. Will there be any distinction? And I would like to say that there will be a distinction here in this place for those who are here in this, this church. But I mentioned last week that when we take up our cross and follow Jesus, that it, it should be obvious. Have you made a distinction between the old life and the new? Well, sanctification is taking place. It's working its way out. You don't don't want to be both feet still in the old life calling Jesus Lord. You want to be be working this out. But have you made a distinction between the old life and the new? When I changed my life in Jesus, when I realized that Jesus was my every day, not just my Sunday or an hour on Sunday, when he was my every day, I actually lost some friends. I lost friends because, do you know what? I didn't laugh at the dirty jokes anymore. In fact, I wasn't telling the dirty jokes anymore. I just, you know, they they continued to operate in their perversion. I chose not to operate in, in in the perversion that I was in. I chose not to operate that way. So that difference, that distinction set us apart. And that's gonna happen in your life. When you take on Jesus, when you say yes to him, those distinctions are going to happen. But don't, don't want that old life so much that it, it causes you to go, oh, and you're, you're standing, you're looking both ways, and you're going, well, it's, it's the old life or it's the new life. I would say this, go to the new life. Work it out from here. Don't worry about what these guys say, because on the day of judgment, on the day... It doesn't matter what they say. Amen? But we need to look at, uh, we need to look at some other verses. And I talked last year about, uh, last year, last week, about unsubscribing from some things. And we need to unsubscribe from some things. But I just, I want to read this. I'll probably get through this and then we'll be done 
for today. But look at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. In fact, the book of Ephesians is uh, a lot in this message. So if you want to just go and read Ephesians this week and just, just start soaking that in. But it says, Ephesians 5, 1 through 4, it says, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And Paul continues, he says, But among you there should not even be a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people, set apart people. That's what that means. Nor should there be obscenity, which I have in quotes or in parentheses there. It's a filthiness. It's a shamefulness. Foolish talk or coarse joking, which is a low form of humor, which are out of place, but rather you should give thanksgiving. So you look at the idea of foolish talk. It's, it's, a, it's a worthless talk. It's foolish. The way it's defined here is foolish, moronic words. The talk of fools involving foolishness and sinning together. We need to separate ourselves from that. But since the cross in your life, has there been a distinction in your speech? What comes out of your mouth, has there been a distinction in your speech? Go ahead, come on up here, guys, if you're out there. Another thing that I want to bring up, and I'll get into this more, but your enemies... I know that we watch a lot of movies and we see a lot of vindictiveness and, and we have uh, retribution and revenge and this. I mean, we kind of get into that. I, I mentioned this some months ago at another, in another message, but how has your life changed when it comes to your enemies, those who oppose you or who you oppose? How do you treat them? You want to, I, I think, a, a great test of where you're at in the Lord is what's going on in your mind with regard to your enemies and those who oppose you. Is there a distinction in you now? And will people around you hear vindictive words come out of you? Or are they going to hear different words, words of love, words of I'm praying for them? There's a distinction there. There's a distinction between those who are in Christ Jesus and those who are not. And you can see that distinction in, in how we, they, us, how we love our enemies. It needs to be seen. But the cross gives us a different view. It gives us a Father forgive them kind of a view. It's different.